Hi, and welcome to The Way I Do It. My name is Chris. Back in August, I put in a hoop building. Uh, some people call it a fabric tension building. I call it a tent. So, yeah, I put it up in August, and I had to put in piers for it. It came from Russellville Hoop Buildings. They're down by Lancaster. It's the same kind of building that Brian's Farming Videos has. This particular building is 60 feet wide by 150 feet long. It has 16... 16 trusses so let's have a look at the uh, foundation so here you see this is my pier and it goes 48 inches below the frost line now typically it has a four lag bolts that will hold it down i have very rocky soil and some of my holes got off location when they gave me the instructions i told them i was having a, a 20 inch tube the tube I use is a center from metal for a trim roll. I have a local supplier for metal roofing. They do the trim right at the location. So they have lots of these centers. They give them away and it's a lot cheaper than buying in the big box stores. They gave me the center for the 60 foot wide building. And I think what they gave me as a dimension is outside. So they didn't give me the best dimension for how this, how this sits. So they said they pushed them out to make them fit better. And it has these tubular frame. It's steel. It comes from China. It had to fit in a shipping container, so it's got the sections with the four bolts. Uh, it goes up, and it, it's barn shaped, so it goes up, makes that turn, and then it makes goes up there with five sections. Then it's got the peak section, and then it comes back down on the other side. So you can see the ratchet is one on either side of every, every truss. Through the middle here. Uh, is uh, steel tubing. It's maybe inch and a quarter and they all connect together along the way and uh, That's what pulls the building there and There they pull against each other when they put them on They just had uh, three vehicles and they just were able to slide it right up and over with uh, three ropes the ropes actually came with the kit so on the ends it has these smaller straps with these ratchet ratchet ties like that. They always want to be kept uh, fairly tight. And they are connected to this plastic tubing. And the plastic tubing goes through that. And if they have, there's a place where you can probably see where it overlaps there. Now in that case, they caught both tubes. I think that's what they'd like to do. Okay, so they set that up, starting with the north end of the building. And then at the midpoint, they have this. So they get half the building set up with tension. They pull it tight for the 75 feet. And then they do that end. That's how that's set up. Now, on the side, you can see these connecting poles they uh they have a bolt through them with a uh it's a carriage bolt so it's smooth on the outside but it does not make contact it has a gap however where it makes that radius that turn it does stretch in so on the outside it's got that like a like a big top like a tent it stretches in where it will make contact and then obviously on the roof when you have snow, heavy rain, whatever, it will actually sag down with the weight of the material and make contact with that. Okay, as far as bracing, this is braced with cables. There's no solid steel bracing. And what they have is, uh, like I say, there's 16. So for every other one, it goes up, down, up, down, up, down, and so on, all the way down for bracing. Um, that all came in the kit and it's attached right to that base just like that and hopefully they put all the uh, clamps on correctly one concern about this is it goes through that steel plate and there's no stress relief so hopefully that steel plate does not uh, wear a hole through that cable so then what they did is they picked a location one location near the north end, 
This near the center, of course you can see the center's here, they had these X bracings. And then again, there's a location down there where they did the same thing. Now obviously along the walls, you'll have the building fabric comes down. Well, they call it the skirt on the outside. So this is all attached. When they make it, they melt these. There's videos online on how they make these. It's a company in Missouri, I believe. It's an Amish run company in Missouri that makes this fabric top. Of course, with imported materials, but they make the fabric top. So that's what holds it down. But I took the skirting and I buried it on the outside uh, in stone. I made a trench. There's a, you can't really see, but there's, I filled this in already. There's a trench and on top of the skirting, I put pipe. So I made a trench that drops, I don't know, an inch every 10 feet, maybe or a little less to carry the water away. And so that skirting is buried in stone. Actually, this works for me because this has the height I need for animals and riding and whatnot. The building itself is almost 25 feet tall at the peak level. Now this kit actually comes with stakes. Comes with probably a three and a half, four foot stake. So this could actually be put up, say, in a parking lot, and the stake actually gets driven through each hole. So it's really meant to be probably a really temporary, temporary building. Um, the company said, well, they expect the fabric to be good for at least 10 years. The frame, it's steel, so probably indefinitely. Okay. So there's plenty of ways to do this, but this is what worked for me, and it was economical. It took uh, nine yards of concrete for all of these. Now on the end walls, this is what I've done. The kit could come with end walls. You could buy the end walls, and it would come with just straight braces. I, don't, I can't remember how many there were, but what they had is a roll-up door. They didn't come with a walk-through door. So you, you'd have to frame that up and add that somehow. And uh, the roll-up door was actually like on a boat winch. So it was kind of a funny thing. And we were concerned about the fabric because on the sides you can draw the fabric tight so it doesn't flap in the wind. But on the ends, it's really difficult to draw it tight enough so it wouldn't flap. So that was a concern. And we wanted the metal to make it look more like... Uh, a more permanent structure. This is really considered a temporary structure being a fabric roof, but we wanted this metal with this wainscoting and stuff so it would look like a permanent building. I'm having a 20 foot door. There's two doors, probably, probably a nine foot door and an 11 foot door. And it's gonna be on a track. On this end, it's gonna be a bypass door. So they'll both go over here. The other end, they'll just split in the middle have two 10-foot doors and I'm going to have uh, skylights if you call them that windows plastic right in that section there and then the rest will be the same uh, galvalum metal galvalum will be here and then just above it will be more windows okay and then over here I have this structure this is just a little 12 by 20 uh, this is for tack, food, <laughs> grain. So let's get inside here. So yeah, this is a nice concrete surface. We'll probably put rubber padding in here, but we're going to have ability to wash horses. There's a trench drain in there. So the horse will be able to come in here and be washed. The doors can be left closed. And we can actually, this is like a 40 inch door. It's gonna be an old uh, stairway door from an old school. So uh, the animals can go out that door. And then this section over here, again, we'll have a 40 inch door to make it easier for uh, carrying a saddle through and whatnot. And this area in here is going to be insulated and heated. And we'll use this for storage of tack, medicine, uh, grain, and probably just an area to get warm in. We'll put a, put a metal ceiling and insulate the whole thing. So uh, 
yeah, that's uh, that's what we've got. And uh, yeah, this is January 11th of 2024. We're going on five months this building's been here. And again, like I say, it's slow going, but it's going to pick up some steam pretty soon. Uh, hopefully the weather won't be too bad. Now, I've had questions. Don't you think that building is going to blow down? Well, we just had a big uh, windstorm come through here for a day and a half, two days. I don't know what our true gust was up here, but the uh, windstorm had up to 70 mile an hour gusts. That's what was forecast. So it was pretty windy. And the worst that I saw happen is the fabric lifted away from the trusses. Um, as time goes on, we'll make sure that uh, ratchets are all tight. People I've talked to said they never tighten them. They never had to. They do check them. But that'll have to be. And then when I get the ends on, I'll make sure I get this, this overhang. That's kind of a funny deal. Uh, because it, it bunches at the top and at the corners. So getting that tight is going to be a little trick. So I'm going to have to add a little tension to that. But no, I don't think it's going to blow away. I say there's over nine yards of concrete. Actually, I had, for the end walls, I had to have come back with a couple more. So there's actually closer to 11 yards of concrete holding it down. And that would probably work out to about 1,000 pounds for each pier buried uh, with the bottom up to four feet in the ground. As far as snow load, I, that's probably my biggest fear. We did have a snowstorm where we had over a foot of snow on this section, and it did make the fabric sag. Uh, you can see right now there is some snow sitting there, but that's just barely a, a dusting, we'll call it. But uh, yeah, that was a little anxious, but it took it. So far, so good. I actually can see uh, I need to get up there and tighten right there. I need to tighten right there. That ratchet strap needs to be tightened. I see a couple of them that are loose. So, but again, those are the center ones. So, uh, yeah, that, that's all got to be looked at. Um, yeah, the snow load's a concern. Now, in the construction of it, one concern I have is these trusses have no... Uh, stability um, other than their own structure. So if there was even a, one connector on the lower side, because all these braces, they're all on the top side. They're all on the top side. So if there was something that was on the lower uh, lower string or whatever they call it of the truss, if that was connected all the way through, even if it was cable, um, just cable to cable to cable, that would be helpful. And then of course, depending on the use of it, having a, having a string across the, you know, even if it was up here, having a connection of, of a cable across there, that would greatly add strength. Do I think the walls are gonna kick out? No, I don't think they'll kick out. Um, or if they did, it wouldn't be the failure. You know, the failure would be in the truss not carrying the weight. And the wall kicking out really would have very little effect on the failure. So that's something that I may add. And, you know, I mean, ideally you do it right at the bend. Because like I say, I only need about 12 feet in here. But uh, um, that end wall truss right there, that's at 12 feet. So if I came from there, Maybe maybe a third of the way up, but uh, yeah. Okay, this is what it looks like on the north end. I put that walkthrough door in right there. That was the door I picked up at an auction for five bucks. It's been kicking around here for a while, so uh, it's only a 32-inch door, but that that'll work fine down here, just so you can get in the build without opening the sliding door in this end. Now what I did learn, you did need to be more careful on these piers. However, when I did set the piers, I was under a lot of pressure to get it done. It was late. I had a guy who was going to bore the holes for me, and he dragged me out for two months, at least two months, 
And then finally, I, I was able to borrow some equipment and get it done. And it was very, very hard work because my soil here is very rocky. Uh, if you watch R&R Builders, where he is in Illinois, he's got clean soil. So he can just zip right down and uh, he doesn't, his, his form, he uses the same thing I have. His form, he only puts it maybe a foot in the ground because his holes are so straight that he just fills a hole with concrete and then he gets more, more stable here, especially in the beginning. Here's a better look of what I did for my end walls. These are two by sixes. Uh, if I'd had more time, I would have put them through my plane. They would actually fit in most of those nice little planes that you can pick up at Lowe's and Home Depot because they're only, they're only five and a half inches and those will open up quite a ways. So I could have run those through and got a nice flat surface, but you know, it connected okay. And I, I, used, uh, I used some GRK screws and some good nails. Uh, down here, in this case, I drilled this, okay? I put in lag screws, and some people like those better. I put lag screws in. Now in these over here, I made these brackets, and I welded rebar to it, so it was right down, uh, two feet down in the concrete. And I moved it around real well, so it was real well attached. And it doesn't have to hold a whole lot. Uh, it's not going to have a lot of uplift because it's not really attached to anything that can uplift it. It's just holding the metal. At the top, it's attached to the truss, so it will have to resist any wind load. That's the way it's set up. And then I did my standard uh, two-foot spacing on the girts. And on this end, what I did with my girts is I used two inch uh, rigid conduit straps. And I just attached them with leg screws. And the, the leg screws, because it was new wood, the leg screws just drilled right in. So I think that's a good way to do it. The company said, well, you know, you can just, you can just drill right in to the steel. And of course, they're, they're Amish, so I don't know if they talk to an engineer, but I just, I don't like the idea of drilling into the steel. I know it's got holes through it for here. It's got those holes in it, but uh, I prefer not to perforate it because that causes a stress razor and also allows uh, moisture and whatnot in, which I mean, certainly where they connect on the bottom, you know, that's wide open down there for moisture. But I just felt this was a better way to do it, so. So yeah, this is my fabric tension building. Again, it's 60 by 150 feet long. And this is built in, I'm actually in New York State by the Pennsylvania border in the western part of the state. And uh, that's what it looks like. If you have any questions, post them below, I'll respond. Thanks for watching, that's the way I do it.